Be sure and tell them Lord Mars sent ya. <laughs> Christ during the Last Supper, the cup that caught his blood at the crucifixion and was entrusted to Joseph of Arimathea. The Arthur legend. I've heard this bedtime story before. Eternal life, Dr. Jones. The gift of youth to whoever drinks from the grail. <laughs> now, that's a bedtime story I'd like to wake up to. An old man's dream. Every man's dream, including your father's, I believe. Hey guys, welcome to the Large Marge Santa's podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about their favorite flicks from childhood. I'm Sweetie. And I'm Sweetie. And we're coming back at you with two mics. Woo! Woo! We're back in action! <laughs> uh, and we're starting off October with a bang. <laughs> Why, Sweetie? What did we watch tonight? That was really exciting. Well, guys, we finished a trilogy. Give it up! Woo! First, first trilogy finish, I believe. Well, no, huh? no? I mean, there's a fourth movie. If... But we're not counting that. <laughs> um, yeah, super pumped, guys. We finished it. We are done with Indiana, Indiana Jones because we watched the Last, Last Crusade. Crusade. Dun 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 dun. dun. Cup of Christ. <laughs> the Penitent Man. The Penitent Man. <laughs> the Penitent Man. Ooh, that'd be a Ooh, cool song. That's a good song. Yeah. The Penitent Man. Man. Sounds like sounds like a Marilyn Manson song or something. Like the beautiful people. <laughs> yeah. The penitent man, the penitent, the penitent man, the penitent, penitent man. man. Um <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned after this episode for our new album. <laughs> the Last Crusade. Yeah. Um no, I was gonna ask you, um my uh, my favorite uh theme of this is the Holy Grail thing. Dun, dun, dun. No, it's not. It. I don't know if that's it. <laughs> it's like, do you know with the horns? Yeah. It's like, yep. Mm, yep. I don't know. I can't do it now, but I hear it in my head. It's not coming out of my mouth. Anyways, um, so Last Crusade is mm-hmm. the third movie in the Indiana Jones. We'll call it trilogy. We don't believe in the existence of a fourth movie that may or may not be called Kingdom yeah. of the Crystal Skull. And also, we had this discussion before about how this isn't like a continuation trilogy. It's just like three movies in this series. They don't really have anything to do with each other, yeah. except they have Indiana Jones in them, and they're but they're all different points of his life and have all different char- well, a couple recurrings, but not in all of them except Indiana. Um, very cool. True. Uh, as we've spoken about in our previous two podcasts about Raiders of the Lost Ark, excellent podcast. Go back and listen to that if you haven't. I forget what t- your time that was or what episode. Uh, Temple it. of Doom, excellent podcast. Go and listen to that so if you good. haven't. So good, guys. Uh, and then, uh, where was I going with this? Oh, because we always say this is the one we watch the most. And with and all these trilogies, it tends to be for Sweetie Club, one that we always watched as kids. Um, probably the latest one in the trilogy because it was closer to like when we were old enough to watch them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was a mouthful. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I guess we watch this one most frequently. I think it's the funniest of the three. It was by, on TV by far. a lot. It was and on it TV is. a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I just love this. It has the yeah. obviously amazing talents of both Harrison Ford and Sean Connery, which are like an amazing comedic duo. Yeah, this is really a comedy in my mind. I mean, it's fucking yeah, funny. It's hysterical. So much slapstick. I mean, I don't know the what the difference with the script writing between like the Raiders and this one. Um, Raiders didn't was was very was quite serious. I feel like as it should be. Yeah. You know, you don't mess around with the fucking uh, Ark, of the Ark of the Covenant. Holy Grail, it's a little bit more. It's a little bit more funny. I mean, you're talking about the Cup of Christ. 
You you can mess around with the no, cup no. that Jesus used on the, in the Last Supper before he was crucified. That doesn't no. make sense. But I think it's like a bullshit relic, and I'll go into this later. But like, I don't know. It seems a little fishy to me. <laughs> I'm just saying. I can believe the Ark of the Covenant. You know, like Ten Commandments, like ground up into dust. Ooh, like a lot of power. But this cup of Christ stuff, I don't know. It's 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 kind of there's a lot of holes in that whole thing. Okay, all right. Well, I'm excited to unpack that <laughs> later. <laughs> Um, cool, cool. cool. Uh, 1989, 19- magical year. 89. It was a very good magical year, year for Indiana Jones and River Phoenix, and all those other movies we loved in this year. Yeah. I forget now, but so yeah, 1989. Harrison Ford, River Phoenix has a sweet little cameo in the beginning. Sean Connery, um, not Jonathan Reese. <laughs> Wait, no. no, that is his name. No. Yeah. John Reese Davies. Davies. Dang. That's okay. our favorite. Sala. Sala. Uh, yeah, he's back from the first one. Marcus, Marcus Brody. Marcus Brody's back. back. from the first one. Uh, that's it. Indiana Jones' babe is this uh, Austrian bitch uh, named Elsa, played by Allison Duty. Unfortunate <laughs> last name there, lady. I would have changed that if I were you. I'm I don't know. Really give guy, you, I give you props for sticking with that. The guy on Game of Thrones and Outlander's name is Tobias Menzies. <laughs> I think that's worse. <laughs> no, but it's like equivalent if my name was like Emily Turds. Hey, you would want Menzies as your last name? I wouldn't want Emily Turds as mine, and I wouldn't want to be Allison Duty either. Like, she shouldn't change yeah, it she to must like. She had an unfortunate French, like, chi- uh, childhood. Um, excuse me, it's Allison Dude. <laughs> We can only hope. Uh, anyways, so uh, let's... And, oh, and the fucking sleazy slime ball, uh, Donovan, is fucking in Empire Strikes Back. Don't know his name. Don't care. We hate him. Um, just kidding. Sorry. Sorry. Pratt, You're a great actor. Yeah, um, he's good. You know, he's British, but he plays American in this, which is pretty cool. And John Sean Connery is supposed to be American in this, but man, that Scottish accent slips out all over the place. Oh, no, I thought he was like supposed what? to have been like Scottish lineage. What? No, he's like grew up in like India. Well, you know, we don't know that. He grew up in Indiana. No, that's a dog's name. <laughs> Doesn't mean he's from no, Indiana. No, but they. He, I think he's supposed to be American. You, you think he's a Scottish immigrant? Please. Yes, he's something. No, I think Scott, John Connery was like, I'm not even gonna really try. Like this really? accent, fucking, it sells it yeah. anyway, and I'm the bomb. Like I think that's what Sean Connery says when he wakes up every morning. I'm like the bomb. I'm the shit. I'm the bomb. Dot com. I'm the duty. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so I think we should get into our favorite part. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, Let's move it along. Move it along, folks. Move it along. It's it's time for the sweetie synopsis. Yeah, sweeties. Penitent man. Penitent man. <laughs> Penitent man. Neil. Neil's before God. Neil. Indiana Jones is back again. <laughs> I just remembering this. I just want to bring this up now. When we were watching that scene where like he's going all through all this stuff at the end at the end part and he's like has to save his dad, blah blah blah. We'll get into this. But there's one part where like Sean Connery like shakes his head, like, Oh no, like, you know, there's so many more challenges to go and sweetie like just shook her head at the same time. She didn't even know what she was doing it. Oh my god, it was the best <laughs> thing I've ever seen. What can I say? I just I feel like, strong. No, no, it's not over. It's not. It's, it's like hardly. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Um anyways, Indiana Jones is back. Uh let's flash Guess who's back? Back to the past, sweetie. Back again. Let's go to Utah in the year 1915. Oh, it's, it's Utah? It said so oh, on wow. the screen. Missed that. You were busy looking up on your phone where it was, probably. I don't know. I was looking up um, the trivia. So, yeah, Utah 1915. Uh, Indiana Jones is a Rough Rider. And, right? That's what it is. It's like well, not Rough Riders Boy were, ma- were made way before that. But I think it was a Boy Scout. It says Rough Riders in the IMDb credits, so oh, wow. I don't know. Um, I guess that was. I mean, the Boy Scout uniform Boy Scout. is blue with yellow, so yeah, it was the Rough Rider costume. You're right. Okay, uniform, if you will. <laughs> costume. <laughs> uh, so he and his gang are like traps, trips, traps. No, are going through the where Clip Utah desert canyons. Blah blah blah. Um, they go to a cavern, they see some dudes like getting across and he's like, that needs to be a museum. And we see this man who is clear Indiana Jones has modeled his persona after. So it's this like tall guy in a leather jacket with a hat on. You're like, okay, I get it. I get what this is saying to me. Yeah. So we go through this whole thing. Indiana Jones as a child steals the cross. 
the the robbers go after him the bandits i'll call them bandits um chase him Mm -hmm. to a circus train it's a great scene where they go through all the animals um and he finds himself in the reptile car and so begins his fear of snakes it's quite an interesting scene well this the whole thing kind of prequel shows like all the little these little touches of why indiana is the way he is today right Mm -hmm. so that could have been done actually quite poorly and had been considered cheesy but I thought they do a really good job of it. Um, they do. So, yeah. Fear yeah. snakes, so, check. Check, and then he Scar gets on his... the chin. Check. Oh, I never noticed that scar. Yeah. Yep. Eww. So Harrison Ford has a real scar on his chin. <laughs> so they had River Phoenix. And that's Clever. when he th- uses the whip for the first yeah, time, too. Yeah, yeah. Clever, He's like Clever, whipping Clever. the lion. Um, yeah. And he doesn't know how to use it. So he whips himself in the face. That part always really freaked me out as a kid. I was like, is that how whips work? Like, sure. Oh. You need to know how to wield that thing. Okay. So, yeah. So that's <laughs> what happens. You. So he gets the cross. He brings it home to his father, who doesn't care and like wants him to count in Latin or whatever. Well, why doesn't he care? Because he's busy working on his grail diary, which you don't know at the time, but that's what he is. Um, And then, unfortunately, the cross has to go into, like, some rich guy's hands because he paid for it or whatever. And and so begins Indiana Jones' um, lament, where he's always like, this should be in a museum. (laughs) I'm get a bumper sticker with that on it. Yeah. So, flash forward now to 1938, Portuguese coast. Indiana Jones has tracked down that cross again met with the same rich dude same villain and he gets it back there's a tussle and he gets it back cool, cool. uh so we're back at indy's college uh clearly still the mystery of how many days he's teaching at that <laughs> college is still unsolved because we don't know no well, one that's knows. why i'm pretty sure and what kind of clicked for me today when like he teaches a class and he like tells marcus oh i got the cross or whatever like let's go celebrate but he like has supposed to have office hours and it's like a stampede in his office and you're like what the fuck is wrong with these kids like calm the fuck down they're like all against the like pressed against the window like ah let me in like the most like rabid ar- archaeological students you've ever seen but is that because he's never there and they're like fucking professor like what is the deal with this class probably like, have to have like a midterm and we've never been to class because you're never fucking here because you're like in portugal mm-hmm. yeah punching bad sense. bad dudes that's true that's probably what it is yeah all right so, so he sees out the window and he's like bye-bye and then later okay so he sees out the window and then like two dudes and whatever are like come with us so he, he goes with them because pfft, i guess you know why not uh he meets this feller mr donovan um big d for sure <laughs> <laughs> the big he wishes d. he tells him that he sent a grail scholar to venice italy to look for like the second marker of where the grail is so he's got this tablet and that's the first marker oh, and because got, they like, found it digging for copper yeah remember. they found it digging for copper and that's the first marker of where the grail is which is like this big mystery so the grail the holy grail is the cup that jesus used during the last supper with his disciples and drank from it and it's entrusted like, by joseph of arimathea yes okay so he's like all right uh i don't really want to find this this other guy that you sent to go look for this but like my dad would know and the guy's like it is your dad like lead with that dude like <laughs> start off with like hey yeah. that should have been clue number one like the dude was a shady bastard totally. like who keeps that totally. information hidden and just yes. like slowly reveals it like ha, 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 jokes on you the missing man's your dad good luck <laughs> So he is, so and he's like, shit. So he goes to Venice, brings Brody. They meet Elsa, Elsa whatever her, what's her last name? I don't know. Schneider. Schneider, of course. Dr. Schneider. And she tells them that, oh, I was, um, he sent me to look at maps and when I turned around, like he was gone. Like, what? Such, such bullshit. But anyway, she's pretty and he falls for her. So they go to this library where he was last seen. They uncover some clues. They track down the tomb of Richard, Sir Richard, which is one of the brothers sworn to protect the grail. And on his shield in the crypt, I'm skipping a little. Well, ahead. we didn't tell the necessary. story about that, but. It's okay. Whatever. Um, Indy and Elsa find the shield, the rest of the tablet. Marker number two is there, which tells you where the grail is located. So they're all excited. Kind of easy if you think about it. Yeah, it was pretty I easy. I mean, two stops on this hunt? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I always Not well hidden. envision it more. Yeah, okay. <laughs> too. Yeah. Seemed longer. So, <clears throat> so they get out of there. There's this whole scuffle with some guys who are trying to protect the grail. Yada, yada. They wear fezes. They're pretty cool. Um, so they get out of that, and then the guy with the fez tells them that his father's being held in a castle in Austria. So they go there next, and Indy finds his dad. He's like... Hooray. 
a prisoner but still gets to do work, which is kind of nice. It's like, it could be worse, you know? He could be locked in a room, sad, chained up or something. But he what had like, a nice little desk. He, do, he got to do work? Well, he had that little desk and he was like working on stuff in that room. What? So, that? pretty sure. That? You're just um, sitting there waiting to be rescued. <laughs> I don't know. So they rescue him and then they go to find Elsa and she's being like held prisoner by a mean Nazi. And she's like, it's please, don't let him kill me. And then his dad's like, she's one of them. Like, don't let, him go. don't let her go. But Indy, blinded. Blinded by the hair of that beautiful Elsa. Oops, she is a Nazi. But like, he's smart. He should have put it together. I know. I'm first really disappointed. All, first of all, just the whole thing. Like, hello, this someone is like obsessed with like a holy grail sort of thing. Like, he's been through the arc thing where the Nazis were trying to get their hands and these, like, there's artifacts. Like, put two and two together. He gets Schneider. She's Austrian, but still. Looks like a total Nazi. Let's be real. I mean, there's just so many red flags, yeah. Indy. And, just, like, you know, she's blind, face, blinded just, by the vagina. I get it. I get it. Pulled in. It's powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. Ooh. So, yeah. So she takes the Grail diary and then they tie both Joneses up. Uh, they have to escape. There's a really funny scene that we'll talk about. Um, they get out of there. They go on a blimp. Where are they going? They're going to the city. Or no, they're going to get Brody? No. Uh, they retrieve well, the diary. Yeah, okay, so, I missed something. Yeah. So <laughs> they need to retrieve the diary after Elsa takes it back. Mm-hmm. So they go to like the Third Reich, um, like March, whatever. and whatever e- that- Even though the pages that they needed, which was the map right. of the King of the Crescent Moon, they had torn out and given to Marcus and he was, went to go meet Sala at this place in Africa and um, or Middle East. And uh, but then the Nazis get him, too. So now the Nazis do have everything. So they're like, shit, like, at least get let, let's get the book back. So we have like the other information, because while the map is important, there's other stuff in there that they're going to need once they get to the canyon. Right. Mm-hmm. So they go to the book burning festival, <laughs> the Nazi fest, get the book back from Elsa hightail it out of germany on a blimp fortunately blimp gets turned around they got to escape on the little mini plane that's below Mm -hmm. the blimp pretty cool convenient yep um and then they uh what happens they crash the plane and then how do they get out of that how do they get out of that and then they end up how do they find brody how do they end up in the tank back with sala and everything chase down the no no no. they meet up with sala don't they (laughs) They meet up with Sala. They get all the stuff. I don't remember. Anyways, so eventually they meet up again. Yeah. They find the tank that has Brody. They chase it down. Uh, they get everybody out. There's a close call where you think Indy dies. Spoiler, he doesn't, obviously. It's called Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. He's not going to die. Um, so then they go to the temple, which the Nazis have already found out is where this is. So everybody's going to the same place. The Nazis have the map, so they know where it is. Um, so they go there and they see the Nazis like trying to like get people to go through like these trials to get the grail, even though they don't know what the fuck they're doing. So these guys just keep dying. And then Indy and his father and Brody and Solar find out, found out. And the mean Nazi guy, Donovan, who's a Nazi, by the way. Oops. Yeah. So oops. <laughs> surprise. Um, he's like, you're going to go and get the grail for us, Mr. Jones. And Indian is like, why? What makes you think I'll do that? And then he points the gun at his dad, Dr. Henry Jones, and shoots him. He's like, you need the cup of life to like revive your father. If you don't, he'll die. <laughs> so then <laughs> Indy has to go in. So he takes his dad's grail diary and goes through these three trials. So should we talk about those now or later? Sure. Let's talk about now. Okay. I mean, it's kind of technical. So, trial number one. Yeah is the penitent man so this is the one where everyone's heads keep getting cut off yeah and we're like well how are you gonna escape that i don't know and you don't even like know what's happening because like when they you go through the the like kind of passageway with the one sad sap who has to go before indy and gets his head cut off it's like all these like cobwebs and it's just like ooh, and like doesn't know what to do blah blah and then all of a sudden like the cobwebs kind of start moving because there's like looks like it's wind but it's not wind it's these two giant basically like pizza slicers that come one on the bottom one on the top <laughs> technical term pizza <laughs> pizza slicers giant pizza and slicers like so you see the guys Bing. first of all you see the guy's sword break in half mm. so bad sign then his fucking head rolls out from like the thing terrifying rolling with the homies um but like and he figured it out so you kneel and you miss the first one and then he does like a little tumble yeah it's a little more than just yeah. kneeling i like, feel like wait a minute <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> it's Neil and then some. <laughs> then somersault. And then like, some. How do you know how to do a somersault? Gymnastics. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. But anyway, he gets it, puts a little like thing, a rope or something in the thing, so the the thing stop, the blade stops spinning, and everyone else can come through. So he's like, I'm through. Um, second one. The word Second of God. One, the word of God. So or there's the these name of God. Letters on the ground, and the Grail Diary says like, "Step in the footsteps of the name of God" or something. So he's like, "The name of God, the name of God," and the name of God is Jehovah. Jehovah. Uh, one small snag, sweetie. Yep. Did you know that in the Latin alphabet, Jehovah starts with an I? I didn't. Nope. And Indy, in his just excitement, I guess, that he like knows what to do for once, forgets this and immediately steps on the J, falls through almost and dies, but pulls himself up because he's Indiana Jones. Right. And he does it successfully, then goes forward. Third trial is the leap of faith. Yep. So there's like, the Grail Diary says like, a leap from the lion's head will lead you, blah, blah, blah. There's yeah. always this picture Eternal of like this something. guy like walking in the middle of like this canyon. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. So he takes a step forward and bam, steps on the bridge. So there was a bridge there. Yeah. You just couldn't really see it because it blended in with the rocks. Optical illusion. Yeah. But you just had to have had to faith that yeah. something was there. So you just had to step. And he did. So walks across the little bridge and then he's in this like this little room. And there's this fucking old dude there, like legit thousands of years old. He is legit a thousand years old. But he is the last knight, the last knight guarding the cup of Christ, mm -hmm. the chalice, the holy grail. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the, so the knight's like, oh, God, thank God you're here. Replacement. <laughs> because basically he thinks like he's next in line and he can like fucking leave the temple now and die because he's been guarding this thing for fucking years. Um, but he's like, and Jones like, ah, like put on the brakes, pal. Like, I'm actually just here. I need the cup of Christ. My dad got shot. I need it. And so he like kind of gives him the spiel of like what the deal is with the cup of Christ. Unfortunately, the Nazis are right on his tail. So they're like, yeah, like let's pick up this cup because Donovan guy is like, is a Nazi, but like really more selfish and like after his own means. Um, and he just wants the cup. Mm -hmm. Yep. So he, he doesn't know what the cup looks like. He's just a fucking loser dude. Um, and so he has Elsa. I'm not a historian. Like, Elsa, you choose. So, apparently, and I just found this out today, Elsa was acting like a little double agent. And she picks the wrong cup on purpose to give to Donovan so it'll kill him. Because the thing with the cup, the knight says, you pick the right cup and you drink the water, eternal life. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Pick the wrong cup, works in reverse. So you get the life sucked out of you. Ooh, yeah. Scary. So, so that's what happens. Yeah. So she picks the wrong cup. It's this really nice, beautiful, ornate cup. It's it's a lovely cup. However, it's not the right cup. It's not the, right not cup. the cup not of the a cup. carpenter. Nope. So he drinks it. Turns real old. Real scary scene. We'll talk about it. Uh, he did. He did. Uh, they pick the right cup and he drinks from it. It's It's the right choice. He made the right choice. Thank God. Uh, brings it back to his dad, makes him drink it, pours it on the wound. Cool, cool, cool. Everybody's all cool. Uh, however, the, the knight warns them that you can't take the cup beyond the seal of the temple or whatever. Yeah. Little does everyone know, like, eternal life, really sweet. Can't wait for that. But you can only have eternal life in this fucking temple. So, like, who wants to live in this dusty temple forever? What a ripoff. Yeah, bring them. So Elsa's like blinded by like excitement and power over this the chalice and starts taking it over the seal and he's like no don't do it and then the ground opens up she falls in he tries to rescue her she's wearing those fucking gloves and then <laughs> it's the fucking glo it's the isotoners <laughs> every time it's the isotoners <laughs> don't wear those also it was in the desert what the fuck was she wearing those yeah, gloves for please give me a break <laughs> so then she like sees the cup and she's like it could be ours I can reach it and she like pulls away and he's like I'm I can't hold you give me your other hand and then her glove slips out oops and she falls down the hole you know, to nowhere that part I'll, like always the only part i find funny about that is when he calls her honey yeah this is that weird that is weird honey i can't hold you yeah I need we're not hand. we're not at that point like, yet. yeah like you just met she's a nazi still yeah. Let's and you, get real. you shouldn't like yeah. her no no honeys yeah no honeys. so then indy almost falls in and his dad saves him and then indy almost goes through the same thing where he sees the cup and just like it must just like overwhelm you with like the the yeah. idea of the power and so he tries to get it as well and his dad's like indiana 
and then he's like okay and then pulls him like, let it go and then pulls him up mm. so it's real sweet so they go away right off on horses and it's done end of the movie so, done yeah. done bitches can't put that in a museum though whoops mm. whoops I'm t- uh, who would believe them anyway I'm, I mean I said that like <laughs> so they're gonna be like hey we found this busted cup in the desert it's carbon, totally the cup of Christ carbon dating or whatever you figure <laughs> you find out like how old shit is in the 1930s please <laughs> um anyway such a satisfying end to a tr- to this series i feel like i just felt really good about it like i'm interested to see what they do further with this series but i don't really think i need another movie i think this is just like a perfect ending to this story and like you just didn't really you know mm-hmm. it, you've seen him do this shtick a couple times now and you're like you're cool but like how many other artifacts can you steal how many or not steal but try to get for the museum how many more Nazi, you know, blonde area Nazis can you fucking defeat? Mm-hmm. True. It gets, it gets, it gets a little old. So, sure. I mean, that's why they like switched it to communism and that the the crystal skull one, which was, I don't know, the Russians are, are tough. Yeah. Not, not as good as the one. Nazis as an enemy. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's start with a quick rundown of our favorite parts. Sure. So my first one is the library hunt. So they go to this Venice library and the only only clue they have is like is Dr. Jones's grail diary and the fact that his father was there. So they know something important is here. So he's able to match up the Roman numerals on this um, on the stained glass window with the Roman numerals his father wrote in the book, which is pretty simple. Like we said, like who doesn't see that? Like, come on. So they find, so they have to find these three Roman numerals in the library. So there's three and seven are on the columns and there's like, where's 10? Where's 10? And they don't know. And then Indy sees it and it's this giant X on the floor. X marks the spot. I love that part when I was little. It was just very magical to me. That oh, was like, totally. Oh, it's on the ground the whole time. And it was ironic in the beginning because he's giving a lecture to his students about what real archaeology is. Archaeology is the search for fact. If you want truth, go next door to Professor Woody Wutton's philosophy class. Like, this isn't about X marks the spot. X never marks the spot. So he kind of, like, says all this stuff. And it's actually, like, all this stuff kind of comes true in his little, now, Mm -hmm. like, Last Crusade journey, which is kind of like a little tongue-in-cheek, like, boop. Totes, totes. Um, This scene is also very funny because when they find the, the, the 10, Indy has to, like, break it open. So he uses, like, one of those poles that, I don't know what those are called. It's a pole, metal pole. And he's like... It holds like velvet ropes. Or yeah. something. <laughs> I'm sure it has a name, but we'll just call it the pole. Um, and then he uses it to open the floor. So every time he like crashes the floor down, it the camera switches to this guy who's basically, as Sweetie mentioned, is... Yeah. We've the we've nicknamed Venetian, him. The Venetian... Al- no, Albert Einstein Venetian librarian. <laughs> The yes. Albert Einstein Venetian librarian. I think I thought he was <laughs> Albert Einstein when I was little. I was like, why is Albert Einstein he's so the adorable. librarian? So every time he stamps, he's like stamping the cards. And there's like this giant, the noise of Indy breaking through the floor every time he like puts his stamp on the paper. And he's like, whoa, that was a powerful stamp. And then he does it again. And it's like. <laughs> <laughs> so freaked so out by funny. the end. He just like looks at it real slow. And he like puts it down really slow and kind of been like. All right, <laughs> time to go home. I'm not going <laughs> to use that stamp anymore. BTW, remember the days of the library on the stamp? Oh, my God. Ugh. I was an intern at the library when I was in third grade or something, fourth grade. And one of my jobs was stamping the cards. Because you just it's just a whole stack of them. And you just yeah. like change the little date on the stamp. Yes. And then you go, you stamp them all. It was so much fun. I remember I when it. we used to play library. So we had all these like, like, you know, as a kid, you have all these like little pretend jobs. I think we've talked about this before. Like we were Cape Cod kids. So we were like, uh, like we worked at the, um, like fish market was like a total funny Cape Cod thing. Cause we like always went to those with our dad. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. But teacher, obviously veterinarian, grocery store, one, grocery store, but library. So we like pretend like my bookshelf was a library and like Andre would come in and like check out a book and I'd be like, okay, sure. And I'd like write out the little slip in the back. I'd be like, okay, this is due like this day. So I remember like even when I think when mom was moving and we were packing up all our children's books and stuff, some of the books still had like little <laughs> slips in the back where we had like written one to they were do yeah. so cute so cute, cute as a button yeah. great scene uh what's is name of your favorite scene of yours oh um okay so the next one probably would be for me um like basically like the whole castle scene mm. is like kind of 
is as soon as Sean Connery comes on, it, the whole movie just like lights up. Like that guy is fucking treasure. And he's so good in this role. And the dynamic between him and Harrison Ford is just like the best. It is just so adorable the way they like bounce off of each other. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so that's but And it's really cool because it's like, you know, Indiana Jones is this very like strong, tough guy. You don't know anything about his personal life. Like obviously he's in and out with women, you know, but he's always like a certain way with them. But like family stuff, you don't know anything about him. But his dad like reduces him to like a little kid just by like looking at him. And I feel like Harrison Ford plays that so well as like being when you're like around your dad and, and he's the only one who can make you feel like that when he's this like crazy, like, you know, international like adventurer, mm -hmm. you know, and that just dynamic is so cool. Anyway, so. The best part, though, is when they get captured and they're tied together like on this chair. So they're tied together on this chair and he's like, Dad, like um, I have like a lucky charm in my pocket, reaching in my left pocket. So he reaches in. It's in a lighter. And Sean Connery is like, oh, OK, sweet, sweet. So he like tries, <laughs> tries to open the lighter and like starts flicking it and he flicks it onto the rug. And then like the rug catches on fire <laughs> or it's just kind of burning like on the rug not catching anything fire at this point so he has a brilliant idea to start blowing on it like hello adding oxygen to flame like increases flames so he like blows on it a couple times to try to put it out and instead it like makes the whole room basically engulfed in flames so he's like um so uh some i have to son i have to tell you something like the way he like just yeah. has to like reveal bad things happening is so great so he's like he's like dad not now like basically like, don't pour your heart out to me now and he's like no he's like the rug's on fire and then indiana's like what he's like and the chair and the curtain so he's like he's like narrating like what's catching on fire it's amazing Indy can't see because yeah. he's tied up behind the so they're like he's okay like we gotta way. like so they're like hopping around tied together on the chair and they're like he's like okay dad dad head for the fireplace like he was that funny tone in his voice i love what? making that head for the fireplace um they go into the fireplace and they're like in the fireplace they're trying to wiggle out on the ropes again and um they hit this magic thing that like turns the fireplace around it's like a secret passage into like the nazi war room so they just are like spinning around on this thing <laughs> and all these nazis are like doing shit and they don't notice and they don't notice and they spin around again yeah. and then they stop that time yeah. and then the, the woman the only woman nazi in this operation like turns around and sees them and they kind of smile at her they're like hi and she smiles back and is like <laughs> and then she's like alarm and it's scary um but she's like frau farbesna from austin powers pretty much like yeah. I'm pretty sure Frau modeled her performance oh, after, yeah, yeah. Totally. after that small character. What a Frau. Um, but yeah, so then chaos ensues, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's a really great scene. Yeah. Very hilarious. It's so funny. So yeah, yeah. Just the comedy like, doesn't stop after that. Um, you go. Totes. Okay, so the next one I put down was just like all of Henry Jones scenes lines. But um, <laughs> our, so our next favorite one is probably when they make the escape in the blimp mm -hmm. in the plane or yeah. after. Yeah. So they're in the in, little plane and then... Indy's flying his he tells his dad to like commandeer the gun even though I'm sure his dad's never used a gun before but like whatever neither have any of the the damsels in yeah. any of the other movies well, and they always and find again, a way out like as you don't know any like the personal stuff it, I mean obviously you get the hint, the point that like he wasn't a great father he was like totally like obsessed with his career of chasing the grail and being a professor himself and like Indy was basically like on his own like very independent but the dad doesn't know that Indiana Jones is like this world class adventurer, like killing Nazis, right? Like this is like literal job, and um, and so when he sees his son like kill people, he's like, "What?" He's like, "What did you do?" Like, yeah. and I think he gets kind of mad at him because he like just doesn't think. Sure, I mean, you're like, not supposed to kill people. It's yeah, pretty that's... sure that's something your parents try to teach you when you're growing oh, up. Oh yeah, but, I mean, but they're Nazis, so it's okay. <laughs> so yeah they're in the plane and then these guys are after them so his dad's trying to shoot things but then he shoots the tail of the plane and so he tells them again like uh what is it what does he say in that part um <laughs> Uh, well, so so the plane like drops altitude, and so Indy's like, "Are we hit?" Oh yeah, <laughs> his dad's like, like sorry, "Sorry, son, um, they got they us." Got us. <laughs> but it, what they didn't, it just he shot it by accident when he was trying to shoot the guys. So it's hilarious. So then they go down, and then they jump in like a a car, right? How they get in that car? How they get they from stole the plane? It from the old man. The plane crashes into like the goat farmer's house. And the goats and go okay? everywhere, and they're fine. And oh. then um, the goats—sorry, uh, nothing with the goats. The goats are not important. 
goats on the brain. <laughs> um, they steal the fucking old man's car. He's like fixing okay. it, and they're like, so they're going, and then there's like bombs coming from the sky because the, the Nazis are still after them. And then they like go through this bridge, and this is like one of my like all time favorite parts. Yeah. They're in the bridge in the car, and <laughs> like the plane chasing them is like. Did he get hit? Why was he going through the bridge? No, so, no, no. Wait, you miss you miss the part. Oh no, 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 no. That okay? You're right. You're right. Sorry, you're right. So they're going through <laughs> the bridge, and then this plane like goes through the bridge. Its wings fly off, and then the guy just like flies by them in his plane that is on fire, and he just like looks at them and is like, oh, and then like looks down at his plane <laughs> on fire. Well, it's funny because they like see the the plane is like with no wings on the wings chopped off. He's going through the tunnel, and so. Uh, Sean Connery is like, like step on it, boy, because they're trying to beat the plane. But then Indy just kind of like changes to the right lane, and the plane like comes up in the left <laughs> yeah. hand lane, like <laughs> passes him, almost like beep beep, <laughs> like on your left. <laughs> I'm on fire. <laughs> the guy's face is just so priceless. Good. So then he goes through, and then it blows up, yeah. and then they come out of the tunnel, and then his dad's like, well, it doesn't get any closer than that, and then you hear. Because a plane drops a bomb, <laughs> makes a giant hole right in front of them, and their car like goes into the ditch, like face first. Uh, it's like a brilliant moment of comedy. Yeah. Um, so good. It's one of our favorite parts. So then they end up on the beach, and there's still like one plane after them. So Indy's like, "What are we gonna do? What are we gonna yeah. do? We need a plan." His dad's like, "Oh, I'll take care of this." And yep. he takes his little umbrella out from his set, his uh case that he's been toting around yeah, everywhere he, he kept it all this and time and then he like opens it on the seagulls he's like tut, 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 and then the seagulls f- get scared and they fly up into the sky and they like go through the guy's uh plane and so he crashes so he did it and then he says i suddenly hey, that's my favorite line let me do it <laughs> this is like my favorite right, line of the whole movie like... i like quote it just regular like on the reg just when i'm brushing my teeth i mean it's such a good line so he goes and it's in like i can't i'm not gonna be able to do the sean connery like scottish or welsh brogue what is he scottish i always forget scottish brogue yeah he's scottish i suddenly remembered my charlemagne let my armies be the rocks and the trees and the birds in the sky beautiful that was good yeah you do love that we love that line um so yeah it's just like wow it's like a really long scene but it's like so good so yeah, I mean I don't know. If, do we have any other favorite parts? I'm not sure. Um, I mean I like the end, the yeah. end temple thing. The is whole pretty yeah, cool. that's cool. I mean I have some I mean, like we went through that scary. I mean I'm a, we're gonna list all the scary scenes. Sure. Okay. I mean we always do sweetie yeah. scary scenes. All right. So this Hit one it. is like because we watched it a lot and also like pretty young we were watching these. Um, I feel like I watched like Raiders a little bit later in my life. So like even though those scenes might have been like quote unquote scary, I wasn't as scared because I was older, right? So these ones like just stuck with me because I was like a little kid, like pretty afraid of violence. And this one is like pretty violent. Um, you know, there's some people getting shot in the head. It's super minor now. I mean, it's no Game of Thrones. Um, there's you know, someone gets shot in the head and this little like blood dribble falls down. So it's like pretty minor, but it's super violent. Um so the first one, okay, I think I've heard every everyone has heard me spoke many times. Uh, sp- spoke, speak, speak, speak about my fear of rats, uh, mice in general, rodents, rodents, um, and much like Indiana had a you know a point zero of when he was afraid of snakes. I too have a point zero when I was afraid of rats, and I feel like this movie is fucking it. So gross. Wow. So. If everyone remembers, so they go underneath the church to find the body of the knight. And it's this really old, old, I mean, it's underground. It's a crypt. There's bodies in there. It's really, really gross. So at one point, they're going into the different rooms. And then Indy goes in. And you don't see anything. And he just goes, rats. Like the expression. Mm-hmm. Like shucks, you know? And there's like thousands of disgusting rats all crawling on each other, making that ee like squeaky noise disgusting so then they have to wade through to get to where the body is through all of these rats there's just like rats everywhere and i read that they bred like four thousand rats especially for this movie because they couldn't just like catch rats and use them because they're like filthy and filled with disease so anyway so they were like you know they had made these rats specifically for this film but anyway the worst part is when at the uh they find the body but then those like guys the guardians of christ's kingdom or whatever with the fezes um find them and the whole place is like there's gasoline i guess underneath or it's like natural not natural gas but it's like like yeah. yeah 
Um, so they light it on fire, and so the whole place like lights on fire. So in, in, Indy, being super smart, like flips o- out the coffin over, like lets the body out, and they get underneath the coffin. And then he tries to find a place that we can swim out of there. And he's like, okay, I'll be right back. And he goes away. And there's holes in the coffin, and the rats come spilling into the hole all over Elsa's hair. They're crawling in her hair, and she's like, ah, ah. Oh my God. <laughs> What must it be like to have a rat in your fucking hair? Let's hope you never know. Oh, my God. And it was like at that point, I was like, I can never be an archaeologist. <laughs> what the fuck? Is this what happens? <laughs> no. No one that goes on like crazy ass adventures like it's that in real life. Thing. No, but yeah, but that part is gross. It's I'm, disgusting. I'm not afraid of rats being that, but that scene is very gross. It's just the way that they're all like all over each other. The rats are Ugh. just like freaking out. They're just like, and they're ah! like, and like wet rats are the worst. <laughs> yeah. What is it about wet rats? I don't know. Just, like, Something about like their fur. They just like look, <sighs> you're like in a sewer. So oh, I don't know. So it's just like, oh, it's upsetting. Oh, but yeah, that's a scary scene for sure. And... Um, A scary scene for me was, let's see. I guess just the end when Donovan drinks the wrong cup and he turns. So they do again kind of a face melting riff from like Raiders. But this time it's the advanced aging. So it's again he's like holding on to somebody. And then you just see his he gets like first he looks a little pale. He looks a little he's getting a little yeah. pasty. He's got like he lines under his eyes. You're like, oh, uh, and then he gets worse. And he looks Liver like spots. a corpse. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's really old. And then. From the back, he, he sprouts this like crazy white hair that just gets like long. And that part, I think that's the part that always like skis yeah. me up the most when the white hair just like goes like starts growing and then yeah. Elsa's freaking out and then it just, it's just scary. And then he turns to a skeleton as like, Whoa, but like yeah. still screaming. And then they push it against a wall and he just turns to dust. Yeah. It's like, dang. Ashes to ashes. Deuce to deuce. Well, I made a point of saying, like, this is now the third Steven Spielberg movie that has been, like, a melty face sort of concept. Like, dude, really, like, that's a crutch for him. I'm sorry. The melty face thing. Let's let's talk about it. Poltergeist, melty face. Mm-hmm. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, melty face. <laughs> Crusade, melty face. So, I mean, clearly, like, he's not doing the effects, but that's just, like, a thing for him with, like, a skeleton going from, like, skin to no skin. I guess. I <laughs> right? don't know. Maybe it was a fear he had, and he just, like, to, to keep putting it in. I, I mean, don't know. Is that, don't know. is that, like, Hitchcock being in every one of his movies? Like, every Steven Spielberg movie is a melty face? <laughs> no. Does, I don't does think Schindler's every list movie. have a melty face? Mm. Get back to me, I people. I don't know. Get back to me. Not sure. <laughs> um, get to me if you can. Anyone? No. Anyway. <laughs> Amistad? Melty face? Melty face. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I guess those are like the main scary parts. I can't think of any other scary um, parts. Maybe the part in the beginning with Indy, when he goes in the snake pit, there's like this giant snake that comes out of a tank. It's clearly fake looking at it now, but when I was little, yeah. it's that part scared me, well, for the, sure. The very long, extensive tank battle scene is scary to me. Because it gets like super violent and all these people get like shot in the head. And then like this, the face off with like the disgusting like lead Nazi guy with like the super blue eyes mm-hmm. is just like really creeps me out. That part where he's like banging his head on like the fucking tank. And, I, and we were watching this today. I was like, I don't know what it is about tanks, but they freak me out. They're just Strange. really gross to me. Undiscovered fear. Yes. <laughs> Rats. Latent, latent tanks. fear. <laughs> oh, tanks. Weird. No, but I just, if we want to talk about least favorite parts, yeah, for that? me, it's that whole tank yeah, scene. Because it's, it's just, it's really long. It's so much action. And I'm not saying I don't love action, but I think the problem with this movie in particular is that so much of it was like comedy and the relationship between Sean Connery and Harrison Ford that when we get to this part, it's just like all action and then the comedy is very low. Well, and it, it just went on for too long. Yeah, and it's just a really long scene and it's very exhausting mentally and physically. Yeah. Physically for Indy, I should say. Mentally for us, I guess, watching. Um, but it's not my favorite scene. It's not my favorite scene. Um, to backpedal a little bit, I missed my other favorite scene, which is when they go to the Third Reich um, party. Mm. <laughs> Oh, okay. book burn, book burning, book fest. burning festival, book burn fest, <laughs> nineteen thirty eight, <laughs> um, and Else is there, and she's like upset because they're burning books, and she's really like a historian, so she's sad about it. And I'm like, girl, why are you with these fuckers? Like, obviously, you knew this was gonna happen. Like, what do you she's want? What do you want? Worse, yeah. 
so then <laughs> he gets the diary back and then he he and his dad like go back through the crowd and then unfortunately at that moment Hitler is just passing by and people are trying to get autographs which you know what I'm not sure we're not sure if this was a thing that Hitler ever did which was sign autographs right I don't know right is that something that Hitler did that's just I mean I guess I wouldn't put it past (laughs) him but like do people have books that have like Adolf Hitler signature well they burned all the books so it's like what books do you have left so like why well I guess he could have this like it it looked like a journal so yeah not a book so uh, well they didn't burn all the books that's a misnomer they only burn books that were like contrary to like their thought process right yeah I guess like um so hitler like stops and then he stops and he's like oh shit it's hitler and he's like oh my god oh my god oh my god and then hitler like takes the diary and and he's like freaking out but then he like flips it open takes a pencil and just like signs his name in the map that they need beautiful, to like get beautiful, to the grail beautiful penmanship yeah I say that hitler. adolf but like yeah. classic adolf like not paying attention like obviously <laughs> you don't realize that this is the thing that like your little team has been like trying to get forever and now you just signed it and gave it away to the enemy like <sighs> Adolf. Adolf. <laughs> there, I mean, there's a lot. So I'll say there's three basically like chase scenes in this movie. So you have the boat one in Venice, right? The motorcycle one in Germany. And then you have the tank one in the desert. Mm. So, I mean, I do kind of like the boat one. It's pretty exciting. Mm. It's like, but kind of like dumb moves in their part. Um, but then those guys like aren't really the enemy. Like we don't right. realize that they're not really the bad guys until later. So that seems kind of like, yeah, I don't know. But they should. But you should, like maybe don't try to kill somebody. Maybe sit down and talk to them and be like, hey, like why do you want? The, why do you want the cup of Christ? Like we're protecting it. Yeah, here's true. the deal. I think like, everybody could have. And they didn't know what they wanted it for. I don't know. Those everyone could have research. benefited from a powwow. Both sides. Yeah. Both sides. Yeah. Let's fine. fucking talk it out. Let's what's up with that? It's fine. Um. So wait, I just have that. I have you know the from the book burning, yeah, fest, nineteen thirty eight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the fucking Nazi song is like always in my head. Not always, but like now it is. What's the Nazi song? Now we know it's Sweetie Hums on the way to the bus every day. Uh, well, you told us about that Nazi book you're reading. We know all about you. What? You're Elsa. You're I Elsa. It's like biographies. Shoot, so shoot me. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. Let's see. Mm, okay. So should we go over just some lines we use in everyday life? Sure. So we already mentioned a couple of these. Um, Sweetie says the Charlemagne thing on the regs. On the regs. Um, we like to also say the line, well, it doesn't get any closer than that, just to like remind us. It's not really, we don't really use it maybe in casual conversation. It's more just to remind us of how funny that scene is, I think. Yeah. Um, another line I love is when they're like it's tied to the each other and then they're in the revolving fireplace. And then Sean Connery's like, this is intolerable. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to start using that. Um, another good one is when they're in the desert, like scoping out the tanks. And his dad's like, Indy, get down. He's like, Dad, we're well out of range. And then you just hear like, <laughs> and they like spot them and start like firing bazookas. <laughs> the car blows up. Oh, yeah. Saw his brother's car. Oh, man, it's good. Um, but it's just like com- com- comedic moments like that are just like I even I like one amazing. serious line, though, they didn't bring up. Oh. So despite that tank scene being like so long and like never ending, mm-hmm. and there's like so many tussles, and you're like, oh, my God, tussles. Just, like, what is happening here? Um the part where like the guy comes down so like he goes in there um the dad goes in there to rescue marcus so he like he's gonna rescue him but unfortunately that fucking like janky ass nazi dude is like right behind him and he's like dr jones like oh you came back blah blah blah. and he has this thing where he keeps hitting him in the face with his glove remember Mm -hmm. and so finally like he grabs his hand and he's like because the guy is asking him like why did why did you come back from the book like you know like we know something you what is it in this book that you know that we don't blah 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 and then um then he goes he's like it's goose stepping pricks like you or something would try reading books instead of burning them. Oh, I love that part. He's good this like one. great look in his eye. I kind of bumbled the line, but good like, one, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Good one. It's a good yeah, one. He's a gem. Um, also, another funny one. Not it's not funny at the time, but at the end with the knight is like when uh, Donovan picks the cup, the wrong cup, and he's like, he chose poorly and like, <laughs> it's just funny to use like in everyday life when like someone makes a decision and they also had a lot of gifts on that um of that scene so it's pretty great um okay so let's talk about elsa 
Let's talk about Elsa, baby. So, Elsa, baby. So she's Elsa, kind honey. of, I feel like she's not a true Indiana Jones gal. You know, there's like Bond girls and then there's like Indiana Jones girls. Yeah. So there's Marion and then fucking. Apparently she was a Bond girl, that actress. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then uh, Kate Capshaw ugh, from well, they're Temple all, of Doom. They're all really so different in, in many right, ways. Right, right, right. But Ilsa's confusing because yeah. she starts off like as a love interest mm-hmm. and then is a Nazi. And you're like, oh, fuck, she's bad. So she's a bad person. But then they try to give her these like redeeming qualities. Right. Like they show her crying at the book burning festival. Mm-hmm. And then they she gets like visibly upset when the Brotherhood guy like gets shot and yep. when Dr. Henry Jones gets shot. Yep. So it's like, what? Where did they find this girl? Why did they recruit her? Right. Is she is her heart well, in it? Like, well, I what? think the point of her was to be like, she really wasn't a Nazi, like, but she was just as obsessed with the grail, but would have had done anything to get it. So she really wasn't a true hearted person because like it even if it wasn't Nazis involved, like she was gonna get that grail like no matter what, mm. right? Yeah, that's like true. Dr. Jones, like be damned. And even like Henry Jones, who like literally his life's work was that fucking thing. And even he was like, Gotta let that go. Like not not worth it. This is just like something we don't need. I we saw it, we experienced it, like let's get out of here. But her her heart wasn't true. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think she's just. I mean, she's a double agent, and and double agents are like wicked shady. I mean, they always have been in spy culture because you're like, how could you be equal sides? Like, you know, you just can't you can't trust those people. They have no allegiance to anything. They're basically psychopaths. Mm-hmm. I mean, like you're just out out for yourself, right? right. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, but um, I do like her clothes. She's a very beautiful lady, I will say. But it's hard to see her like that once you realize that she's kind of like a Nazi and evil. Yeah, it's difficult. So she becomes, you know, uglier as the movie progresses. I remember being very sad about that when I was little. Yeah. Just like, oh, but she's so pretty. Why yeah. is she bad? But, so what was your favorite Elsa outfit? Okay, so I think my favorite one is just her first outfit. She wears, like, oh. this lovely suit in Venice. It's mostly the shoes that I love, yeah. which quickly get ruined when yep. they go in the sewer with the rats. Um, but it's just a very nice outfit, and he gives her a little flower to put like in the lapel thing. Like it's very cool. It's my favorite outfit. What's yours? So mine is uh, the book burning outfit. <laughs> I love what she wears to watch books burn. Um, it's a beautiful. Bl- it's a black suit. So she's big with the black the suits, which I really appreciate. You know that like thirties kind of glamour leather though. Oh, was it? I don't like know. leather. But it's like cape. all black. But my favorite know. part is this like cool hat that mm-hmm. she has. It's sort of like over one eye, and she's like all her hair up in it. So cool. It's pretty mysterious. Second would be kind of the adorable like traipsing through the desert outfit. So again, she has like what is a masculine like desert like maybe like a mili- a soft military cap. Mm. And her hair's like all up in it, and she's these like cool goggles and everything. That is cool. And these high waisted pants, and mm. oh my god, I just she, yeah, she's got cool, she cool Nazi cool outfits, Nazi clothes. Um, also, what about her little overall like jumper in the like, Austrian <gasps> castle? Yeah, that's cool too. Oh, yeah, love that she's, one. So she's like, she's got good style. Yeah, like, she's, she's Nazi. She's got. Damn good it, why she have to be a Nazi? Her, yeah, her judgment calls are like not good. But oh, and like let's talk about how she boned both. Dad, oh, yeah. uh, father, and son, way to go. Um, I love to like see the backstory of like how she got like seduced, like the old man. I know. Like, that's interesting, and they kind of just like joke about that between the two of them. Um, Indiana's dad, and they're like, Hey, like we're pussy bros now. I'm just kidding. Ew. We just made that term up because I, I know the term <laughs> dick sisters. Me, you <laughs> made that term up, I had nothing to do with I that. I threw term. a lot of different things in. I was like, Vagina brothers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I said all them pussy bros because we have in if you are a straight woman you have if you've ever heard it called dick sisters where like you've slept two women have slept with the same man so then you're dick sisters I prefer Eskimo sisters which is just a nicer more friendly term so. I don't know I like the crude <laughs> I'm all about the crude all right. but yeah that's like kind of kind of weird yeah but like again so she, so again it just proves though that she would not that like Dr. Henry Jones isn't like fucking cute as a button I don't know if I'd had sex with him at that point. Well, whatever. I would Sean Connery. But <laughs> but it just goes to show like that she was really going to do anything to get the information that she wanted. Right? Yeah. 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 True. True, true. Because I thought that scene was going to be like when he, she kisses Indiana and she's like, I'll never forget the time we spent. Mm-hmm. I remember as a kid watching that too and that part where she kisses him and then like drags his lip out. I was like, oh my God, is that how people kiss? Like, what am I going to do? <laughs> Scary. <laughs> but then I think it would be funny if she had also like kissed the other 
like yeah. the older the elder jones that would have been kind of funny okay. but but sure. she she just settles on indiana and it's like they had this like connection or whatever but i was like did you and i was very brief it was two days under duress yeah, like was, let's be real plus she's a nazi so yeah, no, i don't think so no. but he really did like have weird feelings for her and i'm like what is your problem yeah it's too bad um so question mm-hmm. do you think indiana jones sleeps with his students I don't know. He was like giving some of them a look when they I left know. the classroom. That's what made me like, ask that question. You seem like a professional. I just didn't think you. it would be you. I mean, he also seems like someone who can't keep his pants on when there's like a pretty girl, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, I wouldn't put it past him yeah. because, you know, he's he's got a, you know, he's not he's not around a lot. He needs to get his kicks when he can. I mean, he's a busy, he's a busy dude. True, true, true. Yeah. Um, another question why do people always want eternal life yeah, or eternal blows. youth like it's always like this thing like why okay first of all i had no idea until tonight that it only works when you're within that temple right. that is stupid so stupid. no like obviously maybe the nazis did not realize that uh, when they were seeking did, it out maybe like everyone missed that part on the grail tablet like oh p.s like this only works in the temple <laughs> like nobody knew that fact yeah pretty stupid but shouldn't they have put two and two together because the whole story was that those brothers like went in and found it they all drank the fucking water from the cup right Mm -hmm. two of them come out 150 years later but they died so wouldn't that have like been clued people into okay like this power of eternal life is only within this like one place yeah. if they were smart and but, thought about it, but, but like you just said what is the point of eternal life if you have to spend it in a cave <laughs> or even like even not like that's just the dumbest thing like i would never want to live forever we've already talked about yeah. this when we talked about death becomes certain but like it seems like the worst thing yeah. in the world like it gives me anxiety thinking about it being alive forever just oh yeah really stresses me out and then donovan's plan was like to live forever the way he looked now like that no, sucks. i thought they he think it said eternal youth so it's gonna like oh, make you young again okay well i guess, I guess but that, that's not what happened but, yeah, when indy but, drank but it they didn't so. know they didn't i don't know yeah but yeah i mean it just it saved it saved henry's life which is great but yeah I like remember? hella boring in that place that poor fucking night we were Seriously. trying to like we were spitballing what? like what the fuck does that guy do <laughs> all day he do he's like literally been there for thousands of years there's a bible I mean, he's memorized the shit out of that. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Guess I'll read this Bible again. My, my suggestion was he like rearranges the cups. <laughs> he's like, oh, he's like, rearrange the cups again for the eight thousandth time. You'll never find it here. And like, yeah, why? I'll are there, polish this plate. <laughs> why are there plates? Like the plates are a part of it. Like stop throwing. What if somebody was like <laughs> the dumb person? Yeah, the dumb- I'm gonna put the water in this plate. <laughs> <laughs> the dumb person's like, I think it's trick question, yeah. and I think it's a plate. It's the plate. Um, Tom Hanks comes in. He's like, the grill is not a cup. It is a woman. <laughs> it is the relative of Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, cool, cool. Uh, yeah. So that part always stressed me out a little bit. All the cups, like they really don't think about. Like there's so many cups and they immediately zero in on this carpenter's cup. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, have you looked at all the cups? Are we sure this is the cup? Are we so sure confident. this is the cup? He was so when confident. When I was little, I was like, oh my God, is this the cup? I didn't know. <laughs> it was scary. It was what one do you moment. think you would have picked? I mean, I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have thought about it being like a carpenter's cup. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not smart. I'm not smart like that. I went to CCD, but I didn't know that shit. Like, I don't know. They don't tell you what the cup looks like. It's yeah. just all the pictures. Just Jesus well, drinking a fucking gold again, cup. I don't know. It just seems like a cruel joke because you made it all the way there, and then you're like, "What? There's like thousands of cups, and I have to pick one." Oh, and BTW, like your only eternal life is here, and you're gonna have to guard the cups. Like uh, I'm out of here. Is it choice to leave? <laughs> I don't know. Like, do you have to pick a cup? <laughs> it seems. I, I need the rules. I'm I need sorry. the rules this in just, writing. This is why this little this myth or legend or whatever just like. I don't know. This one rings false to me. <laughs> Fake news. Well, I never, I mean, like, I don't, I didn't doubt that there may, be, like, if there's an Ark of the Covenant, I'm sure there's probably, the cup is out there somewhere. But I would never, nowhere in our but, knowledge did it say it was eternal life brought whoever had it, right? But like, I don't remember the, that being part of it. Is the reason why the cup grant, grants that power is because Jesus used it in the Last Supper, right? And then he was able to resurrect himself. So they're saying it was the cup's fault that like made him be able to resurrect. I just thought it was, I thought it was because he was the son of God. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't think that's what they're saying. I don't know. But then why? Like, why do they think that cup like generates that sort of power? You know what I mean? 
I have no idea. Now it's just getting it's getting real complicated. Um, total total sweetie confusion, which we obviously still have. Right. Um, I was also confused by the by the bridge scene that's hidden. I thought that like it only became visible once Indy like discovered it. I don't know. Like when I was little, I didn't realize that it yeah. was like a hidden bridge. I thought it was just never there, and then the, and the rocks just made it visible. I don't know. I, I never got that part when I was little. Sweetie, you didn't realize that Elsa picked the wrong cup on purpose. Yes. Yeah, big revelation for me. I love when you find out you've seen a movie a thousand times and then you find out a new thing. It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> pretty exciting. It's like watching it for the first time. <laughs> new brain. Um, anything else? Um. What else? What else? What else? Our Einstein Venetian librarian. It's my new trivia name, everybody. Uh, Eternal life, question mark, equals miserable, check. Um, River Phoenix, RIP, miss you. Should we play a quick round of sing that theme, theme song? Oh, God. (laughs) I don't know if I can do it. (laughs) You want me to do it or you want to do it? Okay. We can do some, okay. So, will we start? Okay, ready? (laughs) Okay. India Jones. Dun, 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 dun. Star Wars. How about the Imperial March? Third it's really catchy. I mean, it's got to give it to those Nazis for doing those catchy jams. Snappy little town. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This movie's so fabulous. I mean, who? I. A lot of people. Um. I believe even Steven Spielberg himself. This is his favorite of the of the Indiana Jones movies. Um. I really like it. I mean, I think I do like Lost Ark. Rage Lost Ark a little bit more now. Um, but this one is just so funny. Obviously, the Sean Connery part, as we said, amazing. Um, it is just a, a lovely thing to watch. And I feel like if it is ever on TV, and sadly, this doesn't happen anymore because we don't really have cable. But if we did, mm-hmm. and when we used to, um, if this movie was ever on TV, like that was getting, you would sit down and watch that. You would you would not be turning the channel to anything else. Correct. I mean, it's, it's so good. Right? It's a treasure. It's such a treasure, such a treasure. and I can't believe we're all done with Indiana Jones. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Mm. It's been our, one of my our, our, my favorite couple of podcast episodes. They're yeah, just. I, know. I hope this one lived up to it. I'm not sure. I'm feeling I'm really scared. scared. I'm feeling scared. Yeah, but I did the Nazi song. <laughs> did do the Nazi song. And we talked Pretty about great. duty. Duties. Yeah. Okay. You're right. It's I probably feel, fun. I feel like it's going to be good. All right. Cool. Well, I hope you guys agree. Yeah. And yeah. And so what's up for us for this month? I don't, I mean, I think we're just going to wing it. I think we're going to watch some spooky movies. Maybe we'll throw in a favorite for my birthday week. I yeah. don't know. And we did. Um, we basically maxed out our Halloween potential last October. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Didn't we do mo- like no. all of our Halloween movies? No, we have more. We have more like oh, spooky, okay. scary ones. So right. don't worry. We'll ha- we have things. Um, but yeah, thanks guys for listening. We love you. Yeah. Please give us a shout on Twitter at the Sweetie Club or on Instagram at Large Marge. Yeah. Sent us. Feel free to argue uh, argue with us. We can get in our faces. If you don't agree with our we agree no, with our I things. I don't want people in to... a nice, polite way. <laughs> well, I just want to inspire some dialogue here. You know, we yeah. don't know what we're talking about. Like we're like really smart, but we're also just like having a good time yeah <laughs> good that's that, time. that's basically my life motto pretty much i'm really smart but i'm just having a good time <laughs> cool all right well anyways thanks for listening thanks for listening bye, bye.